Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, first live stream here on uh, the Medic Materials YouTube channel. Um, this is a, uh, a kind of bittersweet day. Um, something that, uh, yeah, something that we've been sitting here waiting, waiting for, for, uh, for years, it seems like, um, you know, one of the things that, uh, that always hindered me, uh, at doing live streams, again, something that I've wanted to do for years has been my internet connection at the old house. Um, and, uh. Yeah, it like literally I always laugh that, you know, I had a, a 500K upload speed and I wasn't joking. It literally was 500K. And uh, yeah, now, you know, I'm I'm blessed with a little bit better Internet. Uh, hopefully this, uh, you know, this Internet will will uphold to the live stream standards and uh, and we can we can have some fun here. Uh, so we're going to be getting right in. Uh, feel free to uh, drop a hello in the chat. Uh, I am monitoring the chat here uh, on this uh, on the computer screen. Uh, feel free to drop a hello. Uh, I'm, you know, as everyone knows, I'm from upstate New York, uh, as well as, uh, you know, most of the guys that we do the podcast with and stuff. Gerard, Emily, Kelsey, we're all from uh, upstate New York. Uh, now, I can't really say that about Gerard since he's uh, he's non New Yorker now. Uh, but, um, yeah, so, you know, drop a, uh, where the heck you're from. I, I know we have a lot of, a lot of fans from outside the country. I know a lot of the podcast listeners are from outside of the country and, uh, it would just be cool to see, uh, you know, where you guys are from and where you practice. So I don't need, you know, anything more than, Hey, I'm from Jersey or Hey, I'm from Michigan or Hey, I'm from Finland. I don't know. Or Lithuania or wherever the hell you might be from. So, uh, I am going to be doing a, uh, a little demonstration here, a little, you know, quick slideshow on uh, cardiac conduction system. Uh, one of the things that I can't stand the most is the action potentials, sodium potassium pumps and, uh, and stuff like that. And, you know, one of the things that I found out deep diving into this stuff was the fact that your, you know, your pacemaker, your SA node, uh, also has a action potential of its own, uh, you know, and that just adds to the whole theory of sodium, potassium, uh, and calcium. Cause then they add another channel. Cause why the hell not, uh, to make us even more confused. So, uh, let's, uh, let's jump right in. All right, the, uh, the cardiac conduction system, all right? So this is, again, what your body uses to be able to start a heartbeat from the SA node and then use the automaticity all the way through uh, into the Purkinje fibers. So you guys have to realize that, you know, we always say the, the heart or the myocardium is a, uh, is a muscle, but... Yes, it is a muscle, but it's more or less a pump, right? Think about like a closed hydraulic system, right? You have a pump that moves fluid through pipes, which would be the vasculature at this point, and then that fluid is your blood, okay? So the myocardium or the heart muscle is just a giant pump. Its sole design is to move fluid, and it moves roughly about 2,000 gallons of blood per day. Now, we only have six liters, uh, give or take, of, uh, of blood volume at any given time, but this six liters is moved 100,000 beats per day, equaling about 2,000 gallons of circulated volume every single day, which to me is just bonkers when you're thinking, oh, yeah, you know, 72 a minute or 100 a minute. Think about how many times it really beats per day. So a little bit of review, we should all know this back and front, front and back, that whole pathway of blood through the heart, right? Deoxygenated blood comes in through the superior and inferior vena cavas uh, and then comes into the right atrium. It goes down uh, through your tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. It then uh, goes in through the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery always leads or arteries always lead away from the heart. This is one of the uh, only um, or I should say the only in an in a adult uh, human, the only artery that takes deoxygenated blood away from the heart. That pulmonary artery then goes to 
the uh, the lungs, it gets oxygenated via diffusion down at the capillary beds at the alveoli, comes back through the pulmonary vein. Again, veins come back to the heart carrying typically deoxygenated blood. In this case, it's carrying oxygenated blood. And uh, and that's going to go into the, uh, the left atrium, go down through the mitral valve, and then... Uh, into the left ventricle, where then it's going to get pumped out through the aorta uh, right here and out towards the rest of the body. So all of this is that, you know, that flow of deoxygen and oxygen blood that we absolutely need to know, uh, you know, as EMS and medical providers here. So one of the things that we have to think about is how unique cardiac muscle really is. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the only type of muscle in the body that can uh, carry its own electrical current. It is striated to uh, help with that uh, ability of, you know, conduction. It's striated to help uh, the ability to contract and relax over and over and over and over. Because again, this, this doesn't stop, right? Our skeletal muscle stops. If you don't move your finger, you know, you're not using that skeletal muscle. If you're not using your gut to digest food, you're not utilizing that muscle. This cardiac muscle starts off at day one when you're in the womb and it stops, you know, a hundred years later or however long you are, you know, you live on this world and you, you know, you are going to be a hundred thousand times a day, 365 for, you know, a hundred years. Think about how many times that, that muscle is being utilized, right? So this cardiac striated muscle really lends its way to help conduction of electricity through it right, as well as be able to actually give the squeeze and the contractility uh, of that heart muscle to be able to eject the blood out into the body. So here's where we start with action potentials. And like I said, I'm not a fan. I hate action potentials. Uh, I hated learning about it in paramedic school. I hated, re, you know, refreshing myself for this, uh, you know, just to make sure that I understood what the heck it means. And, you know, we think about action potentials, right? We always think about the cardiac action potential. And the cardiac action potential is really the, uh, the you know, shift of sodium and potassium to actually create the squeeze of the heart muscle, that contraction of the heart muscle, right? Whereas when we're talking about the pacemaker action potential, we're talking about the automaticity of the cardiac muscle. So the ability for it to generate a lone electrical pulse by itself at the SA node and then travel through the, uh, through the heart tissue uh, and, you know, conduct it and eventually start contracting all of that muscle through the, you know, sodium potassium pump for contraction, right? So there's four phases in here, okay? And the first one that we have to understand is this phase in orange here. And this is a depolarization phase, all right? This is the start of that automaticity, okay? Now, I'm going to break this down super simple. You can go to other YouTube channels and watch the in-depth version of this. But realistically, I don't think paramedics really need to understand the super, you know, uh, deep dive into automaticity and action potentials, right? So when we're looking at the ground level here, we're looking at immediate depolarization, okay? Sodium is, is influxing uh, into the cells and you're getting that initial, you know, uh, generation of an electrical pulse in the SA node, right? And then you have calcium, right? The sodium potassium pump now gets calcium into it, okay? And there's a reason why we have a sodium potassium and calcium channel blocker as paramedics, right? Because we're acting on this action potential with each of those drugs, all right? So you get a rapid depolarization and push of that electrical activity down through the heart muscle with this rapid influx of calcium, okay? Then we start to get a outflux of potassium. So potassium sits within the cells 
And now you're starting this downslope here, this downswing. You were going positive. Now you're going to start trailing down negative. And the potassium moves out of the cell, making it more negative until you get down to, uh, you know, the whole depolarization phase. Okay, so this is slowing down the electrical current, uh, getting ready for the next electrical pulse. And, you know, typical heart rate is what? 60 to 100 beats per minute, you know? And this is happening 60 to 100 times uh, every, uh, you know, every time that, um, you know, it we're beating, you know, 60 to 100 times a minute. Uh, hey, humble man. Uh, greetings from Mississippi, I see. Um, hopefully you guys are, uh, did Mississippi get hit with the hurricane? I honestly don't know. Uh, we, uh, we, we gave a, a good shout out to Florida, uh, but uh, I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, if, uh, if Mississippi got hit. So we have to kind of think in terms of how much does nerves play into the uh, the ability for our SA node to fire, right? And the SA node really is just a nerve bundle, okay? And um, when you look at this, the right branch of the vagus nerve comes down off of the vagus nerve, goes into the heart muscle, and creates your SA node. Okay, so all of these electrical pathways are just nerve nodes that conduct electricity, okay? So we're thinking when, you're, when your vagus nerve, you know, uh, says, okay, you're going to have a high heart rate or you're going to have a low heart rate. That's how nerves control uh, your heart rate. They don't control the automaticity, the electrical impulses. That's that sodium, calcium, and potassium pump uh, action potential. This just says we're going to make it fast or slow or regular, all right? And that's all done by the autonomic nervous system, right? The autonomic nervous system is our sympathetic and our parasympathetic nervous system. This just says, okay, we need a high heart rate, so we're going to raise the heart rate via the sympathetic nervous system. We're going to put it everything into overdrive and hit the gas pedal right? But hey, now we need to start slowing it down. We need to come back down to earth. We need to relax. Now we're going to be in the parasympathetic nervous system and we're going to lower, uh, you know, that heart rate. Okay. This is again, how that vagus nerve plays on the, uh, on the electrical conduction. Again, it doesn't start that electrical current, but it tells it how fast or slow to actually create that current. Hey, uh, hey, Rich, uh, love what y'all do. Thank you very much, sir. I, uh, I very much appreciate it. I hope that you're still listening to the podcast uh, on YouTube. I know I got to get the latest one up. Sorry if, uh, if we're a little behind. Uh, that was totally my fault with the, uh, with the whole buying and selling a house thing at the same time. Never will do that ever again. Um, not nearly what they got. Uh, yeah, right. I, uh, I would hope that... Uh, that you guys are, are good and safe down there. Typically, so my wife works for the, for, you know, the air medical company up here in New York. And a lot of times they actually will, uh, will say like, Hey, there's been a disaster or whatever. We're going to send aircraft down. And she's always, you know, signed up for it and they never call her. Um, which is good, I guess, you know, means it's not that bad. They don't need her or they got the resources, but so where is your SA node? Where's your sinoatrial node? All right, like I said, it's a crescent-shaped bundle of nerve cells that start right in the top of the right atrium, okay? It is literally just to the right of the superior vena cava's entrance. Uh, oh, hey, give us uh, one second here. Yeah. Ah, No! If anybody, uh, if anybody listens to the podcast here, uh, I just got a, uh, a friendly phone call from our, our good friend Gerardo. We're going we're gonna to try and call him back here, see if he can't join us. Hello. Hey, what's going on? No, 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 I was on a video call. You were on a video call? Well, now you're on a live stream. 
Oh no! Oh no! Don't don't be improper. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> um, yeah, I I tied your uh, I tied my phone into the soundboard, and uh, yeah, I'm bringing you in all the way from North Carolina just to say hi. Oh, hello! <laughs> from the uh, the southern bunker now. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's kind of a weird thing. It's kind of a weird thing, but. Uh, but yeah, so I was just talking about the sinoatrial node, and then I saw your phone call, and I said, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna derail this whole operation." And, right, fuck uh, that SA node. Yeah, screw that SA <laughs> node. What do you need that thing for, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it ain't working, you'll know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at me with a pacemaker, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, all right. So are you going to, are you going to join into the stream? You can, you can join into the chat and then I'll let you go here. Sure. Why not? Sweet. All right, man. You got it. You take care. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, humble, hum, humble man says Gerardo. Am I hanging up? I mean, you can stay on the phone. I don't care. Oh, you said, uh, we'll see. We'll see you later. Uh, okay. I, I'm hanging up on you like they do on talk radio. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, it was it was it was nice while it lasted. All right. You can you can stay. You can stay. I'm just gonna keep talking okay. about the Sino Atrial node. All right, go ahead. Yeah, All, right. Go ahead. All right. So uh yeah, as I was saying with this uh with the Sino Atrial node, right? It's located uh at the top of the right atrium, directly to the right of the uh of the superior vena cava and again it's a crescent crescent that's that's a that's totally a big ding, ding. Mm. uh <laughs> uh that is it's a crescent shape bundle of nerval nerval nodes i guess um so how does it how does this automaticity these these uh actual uh, electrical impulses generated by this accident. Ah, ah, damn it. Now you got me all nervous, Gerard. Uh, <laughs> um, how does this just, actually just pretend I'm not here? Pretend I'm 500 miles away. Uh, I'm going to pretend you're 500 miles away drinking a, a stone cold Steve Austin. Wow. And uh, yeah. And yeah, we'll just go with that. Um, <laughs> so uh, how does this actually uh, travel down through the heart, right? So you, it starts at your sinoatrial node. It goes down into the atrioventricular node, the bundle of hiss, then into the bundle branches, and finally into the uh, the Purkinje fibers. So here's what the actual process looks like, right? So the SA node, right? Everyone knows kind of fires at that innate 60 to 100 beats per minute. We want that. That's good, Right. And then it's going to go down through the, uh, you know, through the nodal branches uh, over into the left atrium. It's going to go down through the right atrium and it's going to go down into the AV node, right? And uh, the AV node, oh, humble man, that's not nice. Ding. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, the AV node, what it does is it holds the electrical charge for just a split second. And why does it hold this electrical charge? It holds it so that it gives the time for the uh, atriums to eject the blood down into the ventricles, okay? It's a split second, but it needs this. Otherwise, if it doesn't hold at this AV node, you will not get as much blood down into the ventricles and your ejection fraction falls. And we don't want that. We want the approximate 70 mLs of blood down into the ventricles so they can go out to the body, right? So after the AV node holds it for a little bit, it's going to go down into the bundle of Hiss. And the bundle of Hiss is located right at the top of the septum, okay? This, this long, uh, meaty uh, divider in the, uh, in the middle of the heart. Now, one thing that I found out, uh, oh, hey, hi, honey, um, from the other room, hi, <laughs> Gerard, uh, Jess says hi in the chat, by the way. Are you still there? Hello? Nope, I think we lost Gerardo. That's no fun. Now, now I really am going to hang up on him. 
so uh, yeah, so the bundle of hiss, right? What I never ever knew is that the right and left bundle branches, right? These two uh, linear lines, right? Running down the middle of the septum are actually a part of the bundle of hiss. So the bundle of hiss is again, a node, a clump of cells at the top of the septum, but then it's also the right and left bundle branches. Uh, and then once it gets down into the bottoms of the, uh, of the ventricle tissue, now you're going to go left and right into the Purkinje fibers, all right? Now, one of the really cool things is, uh, you know, most people, if, they, if they've watched this channel for a while or they've heard any of the, uh, any of the podcasts, they're, they're well aware that I share all the stories of, you know, me having a pacemaker. We make fun of it all the time. And one of the really cool things that I saw uh, with the, you know, introduction, the reason as to why I got the pacemaker was the fact that your, your body has these secondary pacemaker sites, right? So the SA node fires at 60 to 100. That is your primary pacemaker. That's where we want it, right? But if that fails, it goes down and it moves into the AV node. Now the AV node can't fire as fast as the SA node, but it still will fire and it'll take up the, uh, the job of your primary pacemaker, okay? It'll beat 40 to 60 beats per minute, okay? Then if that fails, it goes down into the Purkinje fibers and they're going to fire at 20 to 40 beats per minute. One of the coolest things, and, and it, Jess, if you're still listening, I'm sure you're not going to agree that this was any cool, but one of the really cool things about this was the fact that you could watch my, uh, my EKG tracing for the reason as to why I got a pacemaker go from about 60, 75 beats per minute down into the 60s, down into the 50s, into the 40s, into the 20s, right, into junctional beats, which are your AV nodes, right? Your AV node is, is conducting junctional uh, beats at that point. And then it went down into pauses and eventually into ventricular beats and then back into junctional beats at the AV node. So it utilized every single one of these backup pacemakers to get me back up to uh, where I needed to be at, you know, a real heart rate of like 60 to 100. Uh, so that system actually does work. I have visible proof. All right. So last side, I just wanted to go through the EKGs and the conduction pathway, right? So again, we, we have conduction going through that electrical force going through. All right. And then we actually have contraction of the heart muscles, that heart tissue, right? So when we're looking at a, at a regular EKG here, right? Excuse me, this first bump, that's going to be your P waves, all right? Your P wave is atrial contraction. So the squeezing of the atriums and the blood down into uh, the, uh, the ventricles, all right? So again, remember this is the SA node is starting that action potential. It moves through the atriums and it's going to depolarize uh, the cells within the atriums to contract, okay? That's where you get your P wave from. Then you're going to get this linear pause, right, in between your P wave and your Q wave, all right? Uh, that is your AV node holding, waiting for that blood to fill the ventricles. Once you get uh, the ventricles full, now you're going to get your QRS wave, okay, which is ventricle contraction. So this is that... Uh, that electrical current moving down into the bundle of hiss, then down through the, uh, through the right and left bundle branches into the Purkinje fibers, and now the ventricles are going to contract upwards, ejecting all of the blood into the pulmonary artery and the aorta, all right? So that's this big QRS complex, all right? Then we have our T waves, which is ventricle repolarization, so ventricle repolarization is we are waiting for the ventricles again to be able to have enough blood to fill up to start the process all over again. All right. So this is, you know, that's the correlation I wanted to make between the, you know, actual electrical flow and then going through the, uh, through the heart into mus muscle 
contraction itself. All right. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. If there's anything that didn't make sense, just let me know, guys. Um, do, 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 do. Jess still says hi. All right. So, yeah, one of the, one of the things that uh, I think would be cool, uh, I'm glad that each of you guys joined me uh, for this little endeavor. Um, one of the, uh, you know, one of the things that I, like I said, I've been wanting to do for a long period of time is, uh, is, is start doing these live streams and, uh, you know, start just having fun with all of you guys that have been, uh, you know, following us for, for months and years and how, you know, however long you guys have been following us, whether or not, you know, whatever platform you guys have been following us on. And, uh, and just, you know, getting to know you guys, like, that's the one cool thing about, you know, having this platform is, is we get to entertain you guys and be silly and stupid and just have fun. And, you know, mostly we do that on the podcast. I don't, I, I never had the ability to do it on YouTube. Um, you know, cause I wanted to bring like straight educational content to you guys. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, on, on the podcast, we, you, it, it's, it's, a, it's just a ball of fun. And, um, oh my God, that's, that's so, that's so crazy. Believe it or not, uh, humble man says, believe it or not. Uh, but we're going over this exact thing in class. That's nuts. Uh, like I said, this was the worst thing ever for me in class. Uh, you know, I, I, I just, I just got rid of my, uh, my paramedic intern and, uh, for the last paramedic class. And, um, she came in and she's like, can you, talk to me about the, you know, the, the action potential of the, of the cardiac muscle. And I'm like, no, like all she wanted to do is go over the, the, you know, sodium potassium pump. And I'm like, not until I review it. Like, it's just one of those things that you, you don't ever need it in the field and you just forget about it. And then you got to refresh your brain and you're like, yes, I remember learning about that. Um, just not one of my favorite things in the world to, uh, (laughs) <laughs> to go over. Um, and like I said, you know, one of the, one of the, the nice correlations that you make, um, you know, with, with the pacemaker action potential is the fact that you can look at sodium, calcium, and potassium channel blockers and kind of understand why that works. Right. Uh, so when we're giving, you know, a sodium, potassium or calcium or sodium, potassium, calcium channel blockers, we're looking at one of these pacemaker, uh, channels, right? So you, you are literally looking at, um, you know, a calcium channel blocker is going to block the influx or, you know, of the calcium. Yeah. My mind blown, right? Mind exploding too much information. Um, and, um, with the, uh, you know, the same thing, you're going to block the, uh, influx and outflux of potassium using a potassium channel blocker, right? And the same thing goes with the sodium potassium channel blocker. So you're going to eventually slow these rates down because you're blocking that influx. So you're extending that curve, right? You're, you're making the curve go from here to longer and that's going to slow rates down because you have less or you have more time in between action potentials right so that's why when you give a calcium channel blocker the rate comes down when you give a sodium potassium or sodium or potassium channel blocker the rate comes down right um because you're you're taking this action potential at the pacemaker site and you're extending it you're lengthening the 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 size of it. Okay. And that puts more space in between each beat. And then all of a sudden you have less beats in the same amount of time. All right. Um, so yeah, it's, it's one of, that's the, that's about the only really nice thing that I like to understand about this is understanding where that, uh, you know, those, those channel blockers actually affect the heart muscle. So when I'm giving them, you know, if I'm giving amiodarone, uh, which is your, which is uh, one of the potassium channel blockers we use up here uh, in New York, I can understand like, okay, it's going to slow down here, uh, extend here, and that means the atriums and the ventricles are going to fire slower, right? Um, 
it's just it's nice information to know. Um, but uh, but yeah, like like I said, drop drop in the comments if you guys have any questions. Uh, you guys want me to go over anything? Uh, you know, shoot shoot that. Uh, you know, shoot up a question. You're more than welcome. I'll try and answer anything that you guys that you guys give me uh, within reason, right? But uh, if I don't know it, I, I'm very honest. I'm I'm just gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna research that and get back to you, because uh, there's plenty of things that you know a, a lone little YouTuber just doesn't know. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I, I'm in terms of doing the live streams. I'm really hoping that uh, that we can. Um, we can start doing them way more often. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the, uh, the announcement on Facebook, uh, or actually it wasn't on Facebook. It was on the last podcast. Um, this, uh, the September 15th episode, um, we actually, uh, announced that, uh, Gerard was leaving, uh, which was really, really sad. That's, that's a tearjerker there. Um, and, um, and we also announced that Gerard and I have been working behind the scenes on like a super secret, double secret Uber probation project for Patreon. Um, and uh, I think that's going to really put into perspective a lot of awesome things about, uh, about you know, care in the rest of the country. Um, and uh, it's something that, you know, is near and dear to him and I. Uh, so again, this is my one and only plug for Patreon. We do a, uh, we do a third uh, Patreon unscripted, you know, podcast every single month, uh, which are typically way more entertaining and raunchy than, uh, any of the other free ones that you guys have been listening to, if that's what you listen to. Um, and, uh, and then we, uh, I also do a once monthly, uh, educational video just like this. Um, and you know, where I, I, give the topic out to vote for you guys. And you say, Hey, I want to learn about sepsis. So next month I'll make a video about sepsis. And, uh, and then now we're, we're looking to make, uh, you know, this, uh, this series with Gerard and I, and, uh, I think that's going to be super uber entertaining. Um, you know, just like I'm hoping these live streams, you know, uh, are entertaining. I don't care if there's one of you, I don't care if there's a thousand of you guys that join, um, you know, my whole goal and mission in this entire endeavor has been to give you guys extra information. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I love being able to spread knowledge. Uh, and that's, and that's just what these live streams can do. And, and, you know, we can interact and have fun and, you know, drink together. I'm, I'm having a twisted tea tonight. Uh, one of my favorite malt beverages. I drink way too many of them. However, eventually I'm going to bring in the green dragon uh, again, that is one of my favorite drinks. No, I will not give you guys the recipe, but when I show it to you, it's literally green Kool-Aid. It is amazing. Don't ever drink like three of them and then stand up because you won't be standing for very much longer. It's, it's pretty fun watching the, the giraffes walk. Those are awesome. I'm glad you found, I found you guys. What are, uh, what's awesome. I'm just curious. I'm also glad that you guys, that you found us, um, are you, are you talking about the podcasts or are you talking about the videos and stuff? As I drink my, uh, my twisted tea, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it, it's, it's been a very humbling experience. This whole thing. Um, you know, I started this whole endeavor because of COVID uh, I couldn't teach. Nobody was teaching around where I was. All the classes were closed and, you know, they were like, yeah, uh, you are shut down. Like we can't do anything. We weren't doing CMEs. We weren't doing EMT classes. And, uh, the ones that they were doing was zoom classes. And I was like, I don't want to be a part of those. Those are weird. Um, and now look at me now I'm doing, you know, zoom classes over live stream. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that was, that was the whole brainchild behind this. I was like, I'm bored. I want to teach stuff. And uh, I started researching, uh, EMS videos out on YouTube. And, uh, I, I started realizing that there was like a few certain channels that were giving good information. And then there was a whole bunch of stuff that was either way past our knowledge base was terrible information or like whatever. And I was like, there's a void here. I could fill that void. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so, you know, it was, it was like 
boom, this is, this is the, this is the niche that I'm going to jump into. And it's been a blast. And the fact that like I took, I don't know, six months off because I was selling and buying a house and you know, the channel's still growing. We're able to do this. The podcast is freaking off the charts. Like I, we're, we're going over 13,000 downloads this month. Um, you know, we just did our 50th episode. We're in our like I don't know, eighth or ninth episode on, on Patreon. It's just nuts. It's absolutely nuts. The support that you guys give. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and you know, our job is here, you know, our job is to entertain you guys while also giving you guys information. Uh, yeah. So humble man, the podcast, it's, it's, it, it really is an outlet, you know, uh, for all four of us. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was so funny. We recorded the first podcast in the back of our station that me, Gerard, Emily, um, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta give you that on that one. Um, uh, where's Kelly? You know, I fired her months ago. Jerk. Uh, <laughs> she's, she's still under my skin for the, for that pulling that prank on, uh, on April fool's day. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, no, literally, um, you know, I always, I always apologize for like the sound quality up until like, I don't know, the 20th episode, our sound quality sucked. Um, and then we finally got it together. So if you can get through the first 20 episodes, listening to the awful sound quality, I applaud you. You are amazing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, literally the first episode was recorded in the back bunk room of the EMS uh, station that we all worked at. Kelsey was a, wasn't even even in, she was in EMT class at the time. She was still a junior volunteer. She joined just because she wanted to listen about EM, EMS stuff. And then Gerard and I uh, were paramedics there. Uh, Emily was an EMT there. Uh, and, uh, and then we had, I believe we had Justin who was an EMT there. And, uh, my other paramedic partner, Shane, who, uh, was my Saturday night partner join. And, uh, yeah, we literally did it in the back bunk room during work. Um, you know, waiting for the tone to go off and, you know, be completely screwed, uh, about, you know, recording this nonsense with two microphones. So every single time that, you know, Gerard wanted to talk, I had to like pass him my microphone. That's how ghetto we started. And, uh, you know, then, then I finally created the bunker and we got, you know, the set group and, you know, it's been a blast ever since. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really been our outlet. Like we, we really don't hold back. Um, and I think that Gerard's going to go on a rampage over the next couple episodes. Uh, now that, you know, he's in a completely different system and, uh, you know, being that he, now he's doing EMS in the Carolinas. Um, and you know, we've, none of us have done EMS outside of New York before. So, uh, it, it is a unique endeavor that, uh, you know, we are, we're transitioning and to be able to be like, yeah, Gerard, so what happened at work today? And he could be like, yeah, I did this. And it's like, oh really? I didn't even know you could do that. Like, can't do that up here. Uh, so that, that's a lot of fun, but, uh, but yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for what you guys want to be, what you want to do. So, you know, again, leave it in the chat, send us an email, uh, info.medicmaterials at gmail.com. Um, and just say, Hey, I want to see this on the next live stream. If you want to see this, you know, bi-weekly, I think that would be a fun idea if, you know, we did it on like a Friday night or maybe like I don't know, a Wednesday night or whatever. I don't really want to do Saturday nights because that's when everyone's drunk and partying and who, who wants to learn stuff then? Um, you know, but uh, but yeah, I think it would be a lot of fun to be able to do these like every other week. I also really think if this takes off that I, I might bring in some guests from the podcast and and make them come in. Maybe we'll Maybe we will have Kelly come in and uh, and she can, you know, sit there and, and give a, give her unique opinion on, uh, on things. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think it would be a fun idea. Again, we're doing these for you guys. So, you know, drop your ideas on what you want to see, what you want to learn 
and uh, you know we'll, we'll try and make it happen. All right, I'm gonna try. Let's see, I'm gonna try and call Gerardo back. Do 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 do. Where is Gerardo? Let's see. Gerard, pick up the phone. Calling, calling. Oh, there he goes. Bang, bing. Will he answer? Who knows? Oh, he's not going to, he's totally going to ignore me. What a jerk. Please leave your message for <sighs> Gerard Cuomo. Oh, there he is. Hey, what's up? Just missed you. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, Tammy called the, the chief and to take it. Uh, you know, Tammy is is way more uh, way more important than the stream. Let's put it that way. Uh, but yeah, I figured uh, I figured you know we have a, a little bit of entertaining time to waste here. Um, and uh, yeah, I figured I'd call the uh, the the second pillar to the show uh, just ah. to uh, to get. So so one of our uh, podcast followers here asked, "Where the hell is Kelly?" So oh. I, I think I think Kelly. I think right I'm gonna next meet, to you, didn't you? What was that? I thought she was right next to you. Nope, Kel- I, I, I still don't like Kelly. Kelly is not here with me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, I, she's going to need to make an appearance uh, here in oh, uh, in the next episode here. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, someone has asked. Humble man here has asked uh, anything. Let's learn about cardiology. Anything with cardiology, uh, Gerard? Ooh. What, uh, what could you teach someone in the next? 30 seconds about cardiology. Oh, I'm, I'm, shit. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it right on the spot and ask you here. Well, if it's too wide, it's bad. If it's too fast, it's bad. <laughs> if they're pointed in the wrong direction, it's bad. <laughs> you know, it's so it's funny you bring that up. I actually uh I actually just uh literally just did a call the other night for a Seroquel overdose. And it's been years since I had an antipsychotic uh, overdose. And, wow. um, and you know, I was like, I remember these go bad, right? And, uh, and I, was, I was remembering, yeah, like I remember they can have all sorts of arrhythmias. They can have QT uh, elongation, you know, prolonged QT intervals. And yeah. uh, like it just... I like, I actually had to Google it because I was like, I just want to make sure that I'm right in here. So like, you know, we, uh, you know, we, we did the whole 12 lead. We did the whole four lead. I, I ran serial 12 leads like every 15 minutes. Cause I had, you know, like an hour drive to the hospital, of course, cause you know, Gilboa right. and, uh, you know, and we just sat there and we were like, yeah. So, you know, um, you know, let's check the QT waves and, and this, that, the other thing, you know, um, just because I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I don't want them to spread out. And then next thing you know, they're in like a VTAC, you know? Right. So, uh, Elizabeth, you just watched the cardiac asthma video. Great info. Clearly explained. Then this popped up thumbs up. I love it. That is amazing. Uh, the, uh, actually, uh, I just thought of something that I could impart in less than 30 seconds. Uh, perfect. Bingo. For Go cardiology, ahead. pay attention to your axis deviation. It's so, something that we never think about. It's something that we learned in school, and we went, "Yeah, okay." And kept on going. It, you know, but that is that is it, so true. It can clue you in. Yeah, it can clue you into on, um, you know, where your infarct or where your ischemia is going on in your heart, where the insult is. Yeah. And you know? the other thing is what depressions and AVL, right? We don't ever look at depressions AVL. And AVL yeah. Your 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 go to, uh, you know, indicator for ischemia should be AVL right off the rip. Don't even start looking yep. for, you know, uh, don't even look at 
all of the, oh, is, you know, the inferior wall or this wall or that wall infarcting with, you know, uh, uh, elevations, look at AVL and see if it's depressed, then look at everything. Cause you're going to look at right. that and go, Hey, uh, this is going to tell me, Hey, there's an infarct or there's cardiac injury somewhere. All right. Yeah. I mean, if, if I would really paraphrase, uh, you know, the, uh, Jurassic park scene there, you know, nature will always find a way <laughs> and the axis deviation will, is a great example of it because the heart will, you know, if the pathway of induction that it normally takes is, you know, screwed from infarct, it's going to shoot that electricity in a different direction to try and get it where it needs to go. Right. So. Yeah. You know, and so we had a, let's see, let me bring it up here. Oh, where the heck did it go? I lost it. Oh my God. There it is. All right. So, uh, EMS Merck, you say, uh, so when you pace someone or someone gets a pacemaker installed, where does it try to pick up the rhythm with the P waves or the T waves? So I don't know if I have firsthand experience doing that um, or not, but uh, I will try and answer that question. So uh, if you if you are looking at uh, like when you're when you're trying to pace someone, right? Uh, the pacemaker is going to follow your R waves, okay? And when when you're you're looking at like when uh, when they look at my pacemaker they measure out the r waves all right so i actually uh the last time i went to the cardiologist i actually had to get my um my pacemaker adjusted because it kept it kept saying that i was uh in a svt because it was measuring my r like if my heart rate went above 120 uh, it would say, hey, your R waves are way too close and it's measuring out those R waves and it's thinking that I'm in an SVT at like 240, right? But because all of the other computing wasn't, you know, like it would look at the rhythm and go, yeah, but this isn't an SVT, um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't start to pace me, right? So it's not really looking at P waves. It's not really looking at T waves. It's looking at, the R wave, the R wave interval, if that makes any sense. All right. I, like I said, I had to get mine adjusted, like, you know, 0. 0.003, whatever, you know, degrees or units of measurement or whatever, so that it picked up those R waves where they actually were. So it would stop thinking that I'm in an SVT and, you know, sending it to the doctor and be like, yeah, he's been an SVT 17 times this month. And I'm like, no, I haven't because I've only been paced like under 1% of the time. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question. Um, so you're getting back to the, the cardiac asthma video. I love that video. Uh, I got a lot of heat on that video at one point in really? time. Yeah, so it was funny uh, because everyone, everyone fights me that cardiac asthma is not a disease process on its own. Um, you know, it's a it's a symptom of a greater disease, right? So like you, you have pulmonary edema, you have fluid filling alveoli and you're getting the cardiac wheezing, that cardiac asthma, because the bronchioles are constricting to protect the healthy non-filled alveoli. And so it's not like a disease process on its own. It's literally just a symptom of a greater pulmonary edema disease, you know? Um, and yeah, like, I don't know why, but especially when I put that video up on TikTok, they like, I got eaten, eaten alive for that. Um, really? yeah. And I, I don't exactly know why, like, I don't know. It's, it's one of the things that I feel like most strongly about, um, because hmm. most people like just don't, they don't know what to do with that or, you know, they treat it wrong or whatever it might be, you know? Um, I don't know. It's, it's really weird. So Gerard, I got a, yeah. I got a question here uh, for you. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, what do lateral T wave changes tell you? Do you remember mm -hmm. what lateral T wave changes mean? 
I actually, yeah. I, I, I remember flip T. Are you talking Elizabeth about flip T waves or, or like, what kind of T wave abnormalities? Because there's like, I don't know, a, a gazillion causes for T wave ab- abnormalities. By, 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 lateral, by lateral, does she mean her he or whatever? Um, my bad. I mean, I, uh, I am, I am attempting to to find an answer. Like I said, I don't lie and make up shit. I just try and yeah, actually no, help I'm, you. <laughs> Um, I mean, like, like when you first said it, my first thought was, are we talking about like a wandering T wave? Yeah. So let's see. I don't, yeah, I don't quite remember that that exact phrase. Although it could very well be, and we were just it was just called something else, or maybe I just yeah. We probably maybe I just completely forgot. It's not something I really think about. So let's I'm, see. I uh, probably should. Right. So let's see. Uh, according to uh, helio dot com slash cardiology. Uh, hypokalemia will give you ST segment depression, T wave flattening, hyper K or increased potassium, uh, will, uh, give you uh, peak T waves, uh, hypomagnesium, uh, will give you flat widened T waves, uh, results in a prolonged QT wave. Uh, hyper magnesia is an increased T wave amplitude. Uh, so just a taller T wave. Uh, hypercalcemia is a short T wave with a shortened QR. Uh, otherwise, uh, you might see a J wave uh, if it's severe enough. Uh, hypocalcemia is a flattened wide T wave, also prolonged QT. Uh, hyponatremia is a non ischemic ST segment elevation. That's cool. Um, yeah, and then there's like a 400 different other ones. So. Yeah, like that's something that I would actually do a little bit of research on and uh and you know possibly do like a T wave video. Um because you know hey yeah, it, it's it's fun old. it's fun to, or do a you know, find a call and uh do yeah, a podcast on it, you know. Stuff, that kind of stuff makes, yeah. Yeah. That's you know, that'd be but yeah, no, uh, lateral T wave what was it? Lateral T wave uh, where the heck was it? Lateral T wave changes. Hmm. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna pull my stupid card out on that one. Put it firmly on the table. So let's see. It says uh, that was the ED Doc's description in Australia. Oh well, they're Australian. They they just make up shit down there. I don't know. <laughs> Their English is a whole nother language down there. Uh, <laughs> We have a lot of listeners and followers from Australia and New Zealand, uh, surprisingly. Which is funny because I, I have a lot of friends in Australia. Yeah? Uh, you got to fly us down there one time, Gerard, and uh, and we can yeah. go visit everybody. You know, why not? Uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just looking here. I'm just doing a little research myself. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, keep, keep it happen. I'll keep reading. Maybe we'll figure out what's uh yeah, I, you know, and and see, this is why I love EMS is because everyone is everyone's got their own questions and we all learn together, you know, and uh, it's called Strine. What's called Strine? I'm so confused now. <laughs> the the English mutilation of the Australian language. I don't like I don't know. The only, the oh, only like famous, realistically, the only famous Australian I know is. Uh, Don't say it. What? What were you gonna say? I wasn't gonna say Paul Hogan. Okay, I was gonna say because you will get your ass kicked. No, no, no! I was not gonna say Paul Hogan. <laughs> I, I was, I was actually uh, gonna go to uh, uh, Belmo, uh, Jason Belmonte, the uh, professional bowler. Australian English is called you stride. You know, you know me in bowling. It's like my favorite pastime activity. Right. Forget about the crocodile hunter, right? Forget about freaking, oh, you know. Dude, the crocodile. It was a disaster when he died. <laughs> We're going straight to bowling. <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> why not? Oh, man. See, this is this is why I was scared to call you because this is how the show gets derailed. Yeah. <laughs> you say derailed. I say right on target. Yeah, we see you. I say derailed. You say entertainment. That's right. <laughs> uh, P wave morphology. Let's take a look. Yeah. 
Let me take a look. See. So, so what was the? Uh, so what, what did they say the name of that was? Uh, lateral T wave changes. Right, right, right. But what did somebody? Did somebody else chimed in with another answer. Uh, it was called something else. Yeah. No, they were they were talking about the Australian English language, not about T waves. Oh, okay. So, right, two people separated by a common language. Yep. Isn't it terrible? So, uh, yep. so Gerard, uh, for those that don't know, in the in the podcast, we have a very uh, amazing guest uh, named Butch to do. We should call yep. Butch. And be like, yo, what do lateral T waves mean? Because I mean, he could do a probably a, a whole solo documentary on it. Uh, but I was just sitting here thinking that uh, I think we need to hear a little bit of Butch's podcast intro. What do you think? Oh yeah, go for it. Why not? Just just because well, this I'm song a, this song rocks. It, it, it might help me find a better answer than I'm finding. <laughs> I doubt it. You know, I, I still think I'm going to steal this for the podcast. Come January 1st, this might be the new intro music to the podcast. Who knew that ACDC could orchestra? Right? Like, it's it's so, so sick. Such a sick tune. Yeah, so I... You know what? I would say I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to assume that she's talking or he's talking about. Uh... What? I mean, it almost sounds like the description is you know when you're talking about lateral changes. To me, yep. that that means it's moving its position left or right. So to me, that's that's a either a, you know a, um, some type of block, like a type three. Okay. And, that's and, and typically... What I'm from, from just the English, you know, raw translation of lateral, you know, movement. Right. And typically, so, uh, when you're talking about any type of T-wave changes, you're talking specifically about uh, a some form of uh, imbalance metabolically, right? Sodium, potassium... Uh, you know, some form of mineral that is imbalanced that causes T wave inversions and peaking and, you know, elongation and all those different things. Um, I'm wondering if like uh, lateral, uh, again, this is something that we can research and get back to maybe in the next stream uh, is, you know, lateral might be like the widening of the T wave. You know? Mm. Oh, don't don't even start, humble man. I told you don't start with this damn sodium potassium pump. Wait, right? wait, one sec one second. I need I need you to clarify something. This is gonna sound real stupid. Are okay. you saying P wave or T wave? Like P is in Papa or T is in Tango? T as in Tango. T as in Oh shit. I'm sitting there looking for P as in Papa. I'm like, I never heard of this fucking shit. <laughs> what the fuck is this? I'm like well, like, there's something like, like, well, like, like a lateral movement of the P wave, the pacemaker. I mean, I don't, I mean, fuck. And then just the last time you said it, I heard a little bit of that T, and I'm like, wait a minute. Did that motherfucker just say T wave? No, we're, we're, not, we're not peeing. We're, we're teeing. Tango. Yeah, which, T which, for taco. Um, yeah, which sounds exactly the same over this thing. So. <laughs> All right, well, so, that changes everything. <laughs> Oh man! All right, so let's see. So I feel like this is I've never heard of this. What the fuck is this? What was that? I'm saying like never heard of this. What the fuck is this? I'm looking for. I'm like nothing's coming through. Uh, Yeah. Okay. So. All right. So 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 yeah, the lateral, the laterally changing. You know, T waves. Yeah, that, so you're talking about widening and narrowing of T waves, right? That, and that's kind of what I'm thinking, right? Um, the only, yeah, I I don't see any other, um, I don't see any other way to to explain like a lateral movement, 
you know? Um, I don't know. I, you know, that is something that I would definitely have to research a little bit more. Um, I, I definitely am not all knowing, you know? Let's see. You guys got us stumped on the first show. This is terrible. We look terrible. <laughs> there are 68 causes of key wave abnormalities. Yeah, isn't that crazy? T as in tango. T as in tango. Do, 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 well, let's do. see what some of them are. Uh, All right, so we know most of, them, most of the big ones, right? What was that? And so we already know most of the big ones. I'm gonna scroll through here and see if I find anything weird that jumps out at me. All right, cool. So I'm I'm gonna take the time to answer two other questions. So, uh, humble man, I I you're you're yuck ugh. So, uh, so sodium, look, okay. So potassium that is inside the cells get out of the cell during contraction or vice versa. So sodium moves out, potassium moves in during contraction. Okay. Uh, if, uh, if again, that, that makes sense. All right, so sodium moves out, potassium moves in, contraction happens, everything goes back to normal. All right, uh, we got another question about just hypokalemia, question mark. So hypokalemia, uh, kalemia means anything involving potassium. Uh, so hypo would be low, hypo is low, so low uh, potassium, hyper would be, uh, you know, high potassium. Uh, so typically, like I said, anything with like magnesium, uh, calcium, potassium, uh, those are going to show in your T waves, uh, because that's where that, you know, mineral, uh, stuff is, is really, uh, really gets going in the, um, uh, in the T waves. Oh, that's so not nice. If you, <laughs> Gerard, <laughs> If you took this long in real life, I think I'd be dead. Oh, totally, probably, 100%. That's why Google is uh, is our friend on the phones while we're doing this on the fly or a phone call to the doctor and be like, hey, doc, uh, yeah, I'm out of my swim zone here. Uh, I'm putting my floaties on and come give me help. No, I should just read a little bit about it. Uh, so uh, memory, he was post basic. It's kind of interesting. Interesting. And, you know, one, yeah. of the, one of the things, too, is there's not much that, you know, we do, at least within our area, for, uh, you know, flip T waves or increased T waves or something like that. Um, you know, it's not like we give certain things to drop uh, a T wave, we just kind of notice it and go, you know, we're, we're sort of, New York is sort of an archaic system in that, in that sense that we don't carry like, you know, uh, antidotes for, uh, you know, hyper K or, you know, we don't carry potassium for hypo K and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that would be kind of one of those, Hey, we're going to monitor this, make sure you don't, you know, go into an arrhythmia and then we're going to transport you to the hospital kind of thing. Um, you know, and that's that's just the sad state of New York. Yeah, I mean, like here it's saying, you know, like uh, the few of abnormalities that result from a change in the direction of cardiac activation and then during ventricular pacing persist for a while after the end of pacing. So basically, it, um, it, it, in very small words, uh, it can still look like, like there is an ischemic event going on when there really isn't. So that's one of the T-wave abnormalities that, uh, you know, could indicate something. Yeah. That, that, you know, you might have. Again, good information to have. You know, I think yeah. we're, we're all refreshing and learning something uh, tonight, which is, which is lovely. Um, so again, if, if, you know, uh, I know that, uh, that you guys have, have asked for cardiology again, uh, I will try and do my best to create 
another one of these uh, probably two weeks, two weeks or so from now. Uh, I think we'll start with doing these every other week. Uh, you know, sit down with you guys for like an hour. Um, you know, I'll probably keep them at, you know, eight, nine o'clock. Uh, just so that, uh, you know, I have time to, you know, be with the family, put the boys to bed and, uh, and then, you know, hang out with you guys, uh, Gerard, hopefully, uh, I kind of, I kind of alluded to your and I's secret, uh, that's going to be coming out probably in the beginning of November, beginning or middle of November on Patreon. So again, uh, you know, you guys, um, uh, you know, if you if you feel like subscribing to Patreon, awesome. Uh, that is uh, one of those things that you're gonna, you're definitely going to get a benefit. It is it is a lot of fun, um, and uh, it, it's just it's it's a blast. Isn't the the Patreon podcast like so much fun, Gerard? Oh yeah, no, they usually get the. Uh... You get the shit that we don't give to the uh, to the general public. There. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it is. It's because just, I mean, you can, you can speak a little more freer. You know, you don't have to freaking dial it back. And and like I said, like for this thing coming up, I mean, it's like, you know, it, it's it's gonna be pretty raw because uh, you know, I, uh, I wear my heart on my sleeve. Yeah. Uh oh, my and dog Rubble really is back, eating a cow. Know. Hi, Rubble. How are you, bud? Is it, so 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 let's quantify that. Is, is this a live cow or a fake cow? It's a it's a rubber like squeaky cow. And now he's stuck ah. in the room because my office door closed. And now so stuck you in. should never just you should never just up and say, "Hey, my dog is eating a cow." <laughs> you should always throw in you know the adjective in there. You know, describe what is the cow. <laughs> what kind it, of cow? Is it rubber, or is it still going moo? Moo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So I am going to be closing down for tonight. I, uh, I really appreciate each one of you that, uh, came and joined us. Uh, Gerard, thank you very much for, uh, for chilling with us and, uh, right, no problem, oh, man. rubble shush, shush you. Uh, they're interested in what the, Talk about shit. It's cool. Yeah, you know, it's it, like I said, this is it, this whole experience is humbling. Uh, the fact that we can do this and hang out with you guys is is awesome. Uh, the fact that I can hang out with you, Gerard, is again awesome. So uh, thank you everyone for uh, for your questions tonight. And uh, I think like uh, like we you know had some good discussion. Uh, I will work on some more cardiac stuff, maybe some EKGs, maybe some anatomy. Uh, I love. Uh, cardiac anatomy. I love, you know, 12 leads and stuff like that. Uh, oh no, Blaine, you're late. Um, it's good to see you though, sir. Uh, I, I very much appreciate, uh, you and, uh, all your support. Uh, hopefully you checked out that podcast. Uh, this, uh, this last one, how do I get to the Patreon podcast? Uh, so if you go to, uh, patreon.com slash medic materials, you can uh, sign up. Uh, we do a, uh, a $2, I believe it's a $2, a $5, and a $7 a month uh, pledge. Uh, the, uh, the $2 a month is really just a, like a, hey, thanks for doing the shit that you do, and uh, we love you, but we just want to give you money. Um, and uh, the $5 will get you uh, instant access to all of the podcasts. Um, and, uh, and then the, uh, $7 a month will give you access to all of the Patreon podcast, the, uh, the once monthly instructional video and, uh, Gerard and I's new upcoming series on Patreon. So, and that is again, the $7, uh, you know, pledge subscription, uh, that's monthly. Um, you know, I think it comes out on the first of the month, uh, other than the day that you buy it. So, uh, that's patreon.com slash medic materials. And, uh, and again, it's, it, it is an amazing feat that you guys want to support us like that. Um, and hey, trouble, I'm trying to plug us here. You're killing me. Um, and, uh, Blaine, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you enjoyed that last podcast. Uh, well, you know, it, it's, it's awesome that, uh, uh, that, uh, you enjoyed that subject. I actually got a lot of, uh, a lot of private comments from a lot of different people, uh, on our last podcast, Gerard, uh, saying that, you know, again, we hit the nail on the head and that it's a subject that needed to be talked about and thank you for talking about it. So, 
Oh, the, um, the bad partner one. The the bad yeah. partner one. Yeah. Um. So I I appreciate uh you know the the Voldemort that uh that you know put in that question for us to to yap about for an hour. So, all right, guys, uh, this is definitely going to be up. Uh, you can catch it again. It's not going to be live, but you can catch, uh, the conversation, uh, up on YouTube. Uh, it'll be in the live stream playlist. Um, and, uh, till next time, stay safe. And, uh, I will see you in two weeks. Here's the tweet.